The film begins with Shoya who is a young teenage boy and is trying to end his life. However, he changes his mind at the last minute and decides not to jump off the bridge. Shortly after, Shoya starts recalling the events that led him to that moment. When Shoya was in elementary school, a new girl joined their class. The teacher asked her to introduce herself so she takes a notebook out of her bag on which her introduction is written. Her name is Shoko and she's deaf. A few days passed and everyone got annoyed with writing in her notebook. One day when the teacher asked Shoko to read aloud, her voice was sounding strange, and when Shoya was asked to read next, he started copying how Shoko read. Shoya used to taunt Shoko, a lot. At the time, other classmates also joined Shoya and began making fun of Shoko because of her disability. As time passed by the classmates kept throwing Shoko's hearing aids away and they all started bullying her in different ways. As the bullying escalates, Shoko's mother complains about the students to the principal and the school starts demanding some answers. Although there were many culprits, the school deemed Shoya guilty of bullying Shoko. When Shoya gets home, his mother scolds her and takes him to apologize to Shoko's mother she also pays her money as compensation for the damages he caused by throwing the hearing aids away. Shortly after, the whole school starts to shun Shoya. As an outcast, Shoya becomes a victim of bullying too. Upon seeing Shoko cleaning his desk he's unable to cope with his current situation, so he takes his anger on Shoko and the two get into a physical fight. He yells at her for showing sympathy for him and for not getting mad ever. After the incident, Shoko transfers to another school. Branded as the guy who bullied a deaf girl, Shoya found himself alone at school. Unable to make new friends and being constantly reminded of his past makes Shoya fall into a deep depression. As an attempt to make amends with his past, Shoya goes looking for Shoko. The boy finds her at a sign language center and informs Shoko that he has her notebook, from elementary school. At first, Shoko is confused. But then, she decides to give Shoya a chance to prove himself. He apologizes to her for being such a bully back in middle school and asks her if they can be friends. When he returns home, his mother tells him that she knows about everything that he's trying to do to kill himself. She starts crying and asks him to promise to not attempt suicide anymore or else she'll be very disheartened. One day, Shoya helps another loner, Tomohiro, getting rid of a bully who's trying to steal his bicycle, and soon the two become really good friends. On Tuesday, Shoya goes to see Shoko bearing bread with the intention to feed fishes with her. At the center, a little boy blocks his way and tells him that he's Shoko's boyfriend and won't let him see her. Shoya gets disappointed and returns back, he goes to the canteen with his new friend and asks him if there are any qualifications to become someone's friend. Shoya starts going to the sign language center more often to see Shoko. Next Tuesday, that same boy again blocks his way to see Shoko but his friend Tomohiro picks up a fight with the boy which gains everyone's attention and Shoko finally meets Shoya. The two of them go near the river bearing the bread to feed the fish and become friends. When Shoya goes to pick his niece up from school, he finds the little boy from the center who used to block his way hiding inside the slide. He takes him home along with him and feeds him food and also asks him to stay for the night when he finds out that he ran away from his house. Later at night, the boy flees from his home and he finds him clicking pictures of some wildflowers so Shoya offers him an umbrella so he won't get soaked in rain. When Shoya drops him at his home, he finds out that Yuzuru is not a boy, she is actually Shoko's little sister. The next day when Yuzuru comes to return the umbrella to Shoyo, Tomohiro gets to know that Yuzuru is a girl and Shoko's little sister. During their meetings, Shoko and Shoya encounter many people from their past. They meet a friend, Sahara from elementary school who was kind to Shoko and had tried to learn sign language back then. They also meet Naoka, who also used to bully Shoko back in elementary school and she hasn't changed a bit. 
When Naoka sees Shoko with Shoya, she again pulls her earpiece out to bully her and makes fun of her, but then Shoya defends her and asks her to not do it. The next day, Shoko ties her hair in a ponytail and meets Shoya to confess that she likes him. When she confesses it to him, he doesn't understand what she's trying to say. She then gifts her some cute pen-like things which have a meaning to them but he fails to understand them. The next day at school, he asks a girlfriend what's the meaning when a girl changes her hair and she tells her that it does not mean anything. He meets Shoko's sister and asks her if Shoko is ignoring him. He also tells her that Shoko was trying to tell him something the other day and he couldn't understand. Yuzuru suggests that Shoya ask Shoko out and if she denies then she might be ignoring him. In order to spend more time with Shoko, Shoya invites her to an amusement park along with other familiar faces. Naoka also shows up and all of them go to a lot of rides together. Naoka tells Shoya that if Shoko hadn't come to school nothing bad would have happened to them and he wouldn't lose friends. Shoya tells her to not blame Shoko for anything so she suddenly runs to Shoko and forces Shoko to go with her on a Ferris wheel ride. When Shoko is going on the ride, Yuzuru hands her the camera. Once Naoka was alone with Shoko, she starts blaming her for what happened to Shoya. Those words prompt Shoko to admit that she hates herself. Naoka loses her temper and slaps Shoko. Thanks to Yuzuru's camera, Shoya and Shoko's sister are now aware of what happened during that ride. Shoya says that he wants Shoko to like herself. The next day, Satoshi tells Shoya that Miki told him about Shoko being bullied. When Shoya confronts Miki about spreading this information, Miki snaps and blames Shuya for everything. She believes Shuya is the only person to blame for bullying a girl so badly that she had to change schools. Shoya later meets up with Yuzuru, Shoko, and Sahara. Naoka, Miki, and Satoshi also appear at random. Miki says she has decided to forgive Shuya now because he has been working hard to make things right with Shoko. Naoka snaps at Miki and tells her to stop blaming Shuya for everything. Miki used to sit in the back with everyone else and laugh at Shoko, according to Naoka. When Naoka asks Sahara to back her up, the girl confesses that she was terrified of all of them as a child. While they are all arguing, Shuya simply sits down and asks them to stop. Shoya is extremely upset at their toxic behavior and refuses to engage. He shuts everyone out and accepts full responsibility for everything that has occurred. Shuya asks Shoko if she wants to go out and do something during the summer break after everyone has left him alone. Meanwhile, Shoko's grandmother passes away. Shoya and Shoko hang out together a few days later, just as they had planned. Shoya invites Shoko to hang out with him again tomorrow and tries his hardest to project a happy and cheerful persona in order to make Shoko happy. Shuya is invited to Yuzuru and Shoko's house to bake a cake for their mother's birthday. Yuzuru invites Shoya to watch the fireworks with her family the following Tuesday at her birthday party. Shoya, Shoko, and her family attend the fireworks festival together but then, Shoko excuses herself under the pretext of having some schoolwork to do. Yuzuru forgot her camera at home, so she asks Shoya to go to their house and get it for her. When Shoya arrives at the girl's apartment, he sees Shoko at the balcony. At first, he thought Shoko was admiring the fireworks, but then, Shoya quickly realizes that Shoko is trying to end her life. Therefore, he runs towards her and catches her. Although Shoya manages to save Shoko, he falls and enters into a deep coma. When Shoya's mother pays him a visit, both Shoko's mother and Yuzuru apologize to her for what had happened. Naoka also arrives at the hospital and begins to beat up Shoko. She blames herself for everything that has happened. Shoko's mother arrives and begins fighting Naoka. Shuya's mother intervenes and stops the fighting. Shoko begins to cry and apologizes to Shoya's mother. The next day, 
Shoko decides she wants to make things right. In order to repay Shoya, Shoko reaches out to his old friends and explains them what happened. One day, Shoko dreams about Shoya saying goodbye to her, prompting her to run to the bridge where they used to feed koi fish. Meanwhile, Shoya wakes up from his coma and runs frantically looking for Shoko. He stumbles upon her at the bridge and they both apologize to each other. Shoko feels immense guilt for what happened to Shoya after she left. However, Shoya wants Shoko to continue her life without that guilt. After confessing that he also once attempted to end his life, Shoya asks Shoko to help him continue to live. Shoya makes his return to school. It's school festival day and Shoko is there to provide him support. Meanwhile, a group of friends greet Shoya and give him a very warm welcome. Shoya finally decides to notice everyone around him and face the world at the festival. Seeing so many people care about him makes Shoya burst into tears of joy. At this point, Shoya no longer avoids eye contact with other people and the decks mark on their faces falls off.